Dr. Yang Academy, I'm Professor Yang, and today we're going to go over what we did before last class, except in a slightly different light. So last class, we were able to re-express Maxwell's equations in terms of the scalar and the vector potential. Today, we're going to get these same equations through Maxwell's equations, but we're going to use Fourier transform and the concept of the retarding time. So to start things off, I'm going to have the Maxwell equations. Now today I'm only going to derive the scalar potential because the vector potential, as you can see, is the same thing as the scalar potential, just with different constants right there. So, for starters, I'm going to take the Fourier transform of the phi and the rho term and see what we get. So, phi of... So we know phi, just by the definition of the Next, we're just going to plug these equations back into the very first equation, like this. So if I plug this into here, I'm going to get negative L squared, integral of e to the minus sine of negative t, phi over omega. Actually, I'm going to remove this just to save some, save some space. the second time derivative of this. Because this is only a function of r and omega, then the second time derivative of this will just merely bring down two fat, uh, well, it's going to bring down negative i omega squared, which that just becomes negative i omega squared, uh, negative omega squared, because the i's, i squared gives you a negative one. So this then becomes a negative one, and it becomes epsilon mu squared, that's why you make a squared the integral of e to the negative i omega squared e tilde d omega plus the 1 over epsilon naught e to the negative i omega squared yeah, space there. But here I just substituted this I'm going to simplify this equation. I'm going to bring this inside because this doesn't act upon this integral because this is a spatial derivative, whereas this is merely uh, dependent on time and the uh, and omega. So this becomes Now, if you, if you look closely, here we have an integral of e to the i omega t d omega. Here we have an integral of e to the I, uh, e i omega t d omega, and we have the same thing here. So, which means the inside of these must be the same. So, this minus this must equal rho over epsilon. So, then this further simplifies to...
for our last step, we ended up with this equation. But this seems a little unfamiliar. So let's uh, let's do a little bit of substitution to see it, what this actually this equation actually looks like. So we're going to substitute this. We're going to substitute this uh, phi tilde or f r. We're going to substitute this uh, this constant right here, or a squared, is going to equal to epsilon omega squared. And we're going to substitute rho tilde. Plugging those back into here, we're going to get negative r squared f of r minus a squared f of r equals 2y r. And this is a very familiar looking equation. We know that an equation like this has a solution of the form. that we integrate this over the entire volume of this function. Sometimes it's a fear, sometimes it's a cube. Let's just call it volume B for now. So if we just substitute everything back into here, let's see what we get. We get a here was substitute the values in here for a and brought back the tilde, uh, the phi tilde and the rho tilde. So what we're left down is, is this equation. If I took this back into our original Fourier equation, which is phi is equal to integral e to e to negative i omega t phi tilde d omega, then I should I should be able to find our vector potential, I mean our scalar potential right here. So if I plug this back into here, what I'm left with is this. So this is what I'm left with. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of simplification and do a little bit of substitution. So this then becomes d3r is equal to this. Phi, sorry, is equal to, I'm just going to group these terms together. I'm going to first put this thing in the front. I'm just going to leave that back there, but I'm going to group these two terms together. These two terms, that's going to be uh, e to the negative.
going to do a quick little substitution here. I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this thing right here, I'm going to call this T prime. This then becomes Here is your final answer. We're going to, t here is going to be defined as, uh, t prime then will be defined as this right here. Epsilon naught, mu naught, r. But if we then define, if we let, if we define c, well c, we know that c is equal to 1 over this value. What we're left with then is t prime is equal to t minus r, r prime, all over c. And this right here is what we call the retort of time. So as you can see, I just, I just derived equation for the scalar potential using a Fourier transform and the concept of the retarded time.